don't worry about those too much. Anything 8 megapixels or above is more than enough. If you're doing video, just there gives you 4K. Hi, welcome to Creator Answers. And in this one, I'm going to be helping you decide what DSLR you should be buying. That's assuming you've decided you want to buy a DSLR. So if you're new to the channel and you want to be kept informed of all my content, hit that subscribe button and hit that alarm bell. Now you'll be notified of each of the new videos I put out. Let's get straight into it. Buying a DSLR. Now, buying a DSLR, especially for the first time, can be a daunting prospect. There are so many different models on the market. How do you know which one to buy? And if you haven't bought a DSLR before, if you're fairly new to photography and videography, it's almost a different language. Crop sensors, ISOs, frame rates, the features and specs, lenses, where do you start? So in this video, I'm gonna quickly cover the types of features that you're gonna get from DSLRs and try to help you make a, a buying choice which is suitable for you. So first off, which DSLR you buy really depends on what your primary use is. Because you hear this is a, a channel for video creators, the chances are you're most interested in a camera that is suitable for shooting video. Now, DSLRs come in several different types uh, and these different types can really change how they function. Now assuming you want a DSLR that's really really good at photography then you want something known as a full frame DSLR. Full frame DSLRs are, the, are generally speaking the best for photography. Now get into I've done a video on the different types of frames because that's a subject all on its own but basically a full frame camera the sensor is the same as a 35 millimeter slide. These let in the most light, they're great for big detailed bright photos, perfect for for photography. Now if you're buying a camera for videography then you probably want to be looking at something with a cropped sensor. That's a smaller sensor. Now, as I said I've done a video on cropping and the link will be popping up there if it's ready. It might not be ready yet. Uh, now a cropped sensor is a smaller sensor. Now these are generally not as good as a, a full frame camera for still photography. For videography they have, they're generally faster. You can get higher frame rates. They are a lot cheaper. They use a different type of lens to a full frame camera camera they are particularly good for video you'll get usually you'll get higher frame rates on a, a cropped sensor camera so if you're looking for straight off the bat still photography you want a probably want a full frame. Videography, you want a cropped sensor like Micro Four Thirds or like a 1.5 crop or 1.6 crop like, a, you know, the Canons and, and, and some of the Nikons, okay? Now the next thing you may want to consider, if you're using your camera for video in particular, you want to make sure that you have a flip out screen. Now, as you can see here on the GoPro, I actually use my iPad as a monitor, as a reference monitor, because I find my camera is a little too far away and I can't see my pop out screen particularly well. But if you're using it in handheld mode, which is a little heavy with a DSLR, I'll be honest, but a flip out screen will make you very happy indeed. So consider that if you're buying that your DSLR for video, you may, may want a pop out screen so that you can see what you're shooting. Okay, so consider that. Next, megapixels, the number of pixels that make up the image. Honestly, this, this really doesn't matter anymore. Any modern DSLR has enough megapixels. Okay, now years ago, people sold cameras on the number of megapixels they had. But these days, even like the smallest eight megapixel cameras will still do a gigantic picture. Some of my best ever photography was done on a two or a three megapixel camera. Seriously, megapixels haven't mattered for a very long time. So don't worry about those too much. Anything eight megapixels or above is more than enough. If you're doing video, just there gives you 4K, you know, so you're fine. You see these 20, 30 megapixel cameras, those are specialist cameras for, you know, high end stills photography. If you're doing video, you don't care. Okay, next thing to consider, and this is far more important than you may realize, and you can only learn this by getting some hands-on time with the camera, are the ergonomics, the functionality of the camera. For most people, a, a DSLR is a sizable investment. They can be quite expensive. So you want to make sure that the layout of the buttons and that functionality, the memory settings, the, the how you use the camera, the ergonomics, suit you. Now, I've personally been guilty of this, of not really taking the time to learn my cameras, but more recently, I've taken a lot more care to choose and I, I now only really shoot on Lumix and Sony cameras and I'm taking a lot of time to learn how to really use the cameras to get the best color settings the best aperture settings and all of that stuff now pretty much any DSLR will give you things like 
aperture settings and ISOs and all of that sort of thing. Don't worry about what they are for now. Most cameras will support that in a well-lit environment. They usually look the same. But there is a big caveat here when it comes to the ergonomics. Menus. A lot of cameras, Sony are particularly bad at this, make really awful menus which are a pain in the ass to navigate through. Especially if you compare them side by side with say a Panasonic who make amazing menus. So keep this in mind when you're choosing your camera. You need to be patient to learn how to use it well. And that was the point of buying a DSLR if you're not going to spend time learning how to use it, right? You know, why, why have them if you're not going to take the time to learn how to use them? So play with the cameras if it's your first camera. Find the one that suits you. Don't be brand loyal. When it comes to Canon, Nikon, Panasonic, Sony, they don't owe you a thing in brand loyalty. So just buy the camera that suits you. Okay, especially when it comes to ergonomics. Okay, next up, very, very important, the quality of lenses available. Now, when it comes to full frame, full frame lenses are usually the best lenses on the market. They are also, by far, the most expensive lenses. When you come down to smaller cropped cameras, the lenses become a lot cheaper. And at the lower end of the market, this can become a real problem. For example, the new Canon M50, which should be a really good video blogger camera, there are no good lenses available for it. And so it's dark and it's slow and then you get very grainy video in all but the best lighting conditions. So make sure that before you choose a DSLR and you put everything right, that you, you know you have everything you want, make sure you can actually get the lenses that you want to do the type of video that you need. For example, if you're doing a beauty channel, you're probably going to want a nice soft background, even softer than I have here. So you want to probably get a, you know, a wide, fast lens. So make sure you can get those lenses before you choose your body. Most cameras will offer that, but like I said, the M50 doesn't, and that's, you know, that should be a perfect camera, right? The Micro Four Thirds camera that I'm using here, the Lumix, I love this camera, but lens choice isn't that great with Micro Four Thirds. It's getting better now, but for me to make this Micro Four Thirds camera have that lovely soft background that you can see behind me, so my background's a little bit blurred and I'm much sharper, requires a really expensive lens. So keep that in mind that the type of shot you want may require a specific type of lens. So ask questions when you're buying your camera. Is the lens available to give you the shot that you want? Okay. Finally, you want to look at what software features the camera supports. And I'm talking about HD, 4K, frame rates. Do you need to shoot 60 frames a second, 100 frames a second, 200 frames a second? This will often be a balancing act. 4K full frame sensor cameras rarely get very high frame rates. The hardware just doesn't exist. Whereas something like a GoPro that has a tiny, tiny little sensor, these things get 200 frames at very, very high resolutions. The type of shooting you want to do, particularly if it's video will really depend on other aspects of the camera's body. Something like a Micro Four Thirds is one of the reasons that this very camera, the GH5, is so highly regarded as a video camera because it has such a small sensor you can get very high frame rates in 4K. Something that's extremely difficult to do on a full frame camera. But then a full frame camera gets a better soft background because it lets more light in. For example for this sort of channel where I want to have lighting effects, I want to do this sort of thing, then the GH5 is absolutely absolutely perfect. However, when I'm doing the, the shots in my bedroom and I'm doing the more intimate things and I really want to blow up the background, then I use a full frame camera. I use the Sony a7 III because I can really get that soft, buttery smooth background. So different, different types of cameras can give you different types of shots. So find out if your camera supports that type of shot and do a little bit of research and you should get to the choice you want. So that's pretty much it. That is a quick rundown of the main types of features that you want to look for when you're choosing a DSLR. Later in this series I'm going to be covering more specific details like you know how to get what sort of lens you want for specific shots. So I'll be drilling into the, the more specific details on what camera you want. A high level overview. Hopefully you've got enough information here to make a, a, a at least help you start making an educated buying decision on what sort of DSLR you want to consider. As always please leave your comments below. Like, share, subscribe. If you didn't like it, dislike. That's all fine. And don't forget to hit that alarm bell and pop up on the screen right now you'll see links to my last video and to the next most relevant video in the series so go ahead and click on those if you want to see more videos from me well thank you so much as always i love you guys and i will see you in the very next show thank you so much bye